The Gospel of John, chapter 13, with a word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And as you know, Christ remained for forty days after the crucifixion, and ascended to the Father ten days prior to the first Pentecost after the crucifixion, and you can read of this in Acts chapters 1 and 2, and that was when the Holy Spirit spake through the apostles, and that's a perfect example of what shall happen during the hour of temptation. Once Satan appears as Antichrist in the middle of that five-month-long hour of temptation, it was seven years, but it's been shortened to five months, as we know from Revelation chapter 9, the Holy Spirit will speak through God's elect, just as the Holy Spirit spake through the apostles at that first Pentecost following the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that occurred at Passover. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Satan put it into his mind to do it, fulfilling the negative part of God's plan. But remember, Judas repented. Always remember that. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. You'll understand the meaning of this after the death, burial, and resurrection, in other words. And what it means is whenever you go around in this wicked world that we live in, you're going to get dirty. And how do you travel around the world? You use your feet. So the symbolism here is only Christ can cleanse you from the dirt of this world that you're going to pick up in your journeys to spread God's word, as you should be doing. And if you're not doing that, what do you think you're doing? Why do you think you're here? You're here to spread the word of God, to spread the gospel. That's what you're here for. Get to it. And if you aren't familiar enough with your father's word to spread the gospel, well, then you know what step one is. Get into your father's word and study it verse by verse with understanding prayerfully, whereby you obtain the knowledge that's needed to plant those seeds of truth. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after that he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet with the word, preaching the word, cleansing each other by teaching each other God's word. And the teacher is Christ, and through the Holy Spirit we are given that knowledge, but then we are to share it with one another. That's why God gives it to you. It's not so you can hide it. It's so you can broadcast it, okay? And to broadcast seed means to cover as much ground as you possibly can. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Christ was our example. Christ is our example. You want to know what your role model is supposed to be? Children grow up and get all kinds of horrible role models. Christ is your role model. He's your example. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. In other words, we're all equal. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Peter kind of had a problem with one-upmanship back in these days, but 
he understood after the death, burial, and resurrection the error of his ways. He was taught that lesson, and I think he was caused to do the things that he did as a lesson to us. You don't want to try and start running the show. God is your leader, okay? I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. And quoting from the Psalms there, prophesied a thousand years before the fact. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me, that is to say the Father. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. It was a necessary evil to fulfill the prophecy, and Judas, being used by Satan to betray Christ, is what we have going on here. Christ will pay the price for one and all time, so that whosoever will believe upon him, believe upon the true Christ, should not perish in that lake of fire. So here we have Satan playing an active role during the week in which Christ was crucified. Now, in Daniel's 70th week, which is yet future, and it begins whenever Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth, the political beast will emerge at that time, the one you read of in Revelation chapter 13, and the pattern of it we find here in the Gospels during the week in which the true Christ was crucified, because Satan will appear as Antichrist in the middle of the week, Daniel's 70th week. But it's not seven years anymore, it's been shortened to five months. And if you've ever read Revelation, you know about the half-hour silence in heaven. What's half of five months? Two and a half months. Half of something is 50% of something, all right? Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, the money bag, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, the piece of bread, that is to say, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. The glorification here is Christ paying the price for one and all times on the cross and then resurrecting. And then there you have the glory, because From that point forward, up until the seventh trumpet, it's whosoever will can become a Christian and believe upon Christ, get into their Father's Word, and if they're alive in this final generation, they can obtain that seal of God in their forehead whereby they're not deceived by Satan when he appears as Antichrist in the middle of that five-month period. And you'll even see an example of the deadly wound coming up here shortly when Peter chops off the ear of Malchus. Malchus means kingdom, and the deadly wound is the fifth vial, which comes just before the sixth vial. So see the perfection of your father's word. He told us all things. You just have to understand that the pattern was given then, this being part of Daniel's 70 weeks of years, 77s written of in Daniel chapter 9 that we went over in the last chapter. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come, so now I say to you. Now, who are these Jews he's talking about? Remember back earlier in the Gospel of John where we kept running into that word? But you have to determine whether it's a Kenite who claims to be of Judah or one that is actually of the tribe of Judah. 
And once one accepts Christ, whether it be a Kenite or a member of the tribe of Judah, it doesn't matter anymore because all are one in Christ Jesus. We're all equal. Again, I just want to drive that point home because you see a lot of one-upmanship in Christianity, and that's contrary to how we were taught from the Word of God. All are one in Christ Jesus, and you have one teacher, that is to say the true Messiah, Jesus. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another, which is what the washing of the feet was symbolic of, of the love of cleaning you from the filth of this world. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. And Peter would be martyred as well as the other disciples, except for John. John ended up on the Isle of Patmos and then was time-traveled into the future to the Lord's Day, as we know from the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is literally from the future, and people have the audacity to say that the Bible is boring. There's a book called Revelation in it that's literally from the future. He was taken to the Lord's Day from about 96 AD, and then he saw the things that happened just before that and after that, and all the way back at the beginning in the first world age, he was even taken back then to see that. Think about that for a minute. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. And so he will deny Christ three times. Symbolic again of that hour of temptation and those three Christian nations that are pulled up by the roots at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And you can read of that in Daniel chapter 7. Whenever you see the little horn which is Satan's role of Antichrist, come into the picture in Daniel chapter 7, you'll see that three of the first horns are pulled up by the roots. Now their root is Christ, which is scripture. Your root is Christ Jesus. It's talking about those three Christian nations, Judah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. And there are more than three Christian nations, but they're symbolized by those three, the 12 tribes. You have the 12 tribes within Ephraim and Manasseh, and then Judah are the other two. The kingdom of Judah, the northern and the southern kingdom, make up Jacob, a name meaning all 12 tribes, and the king of the south of Daniel chapter 11. And why does this happen? Because on a national level, if a nation ceases to worship the true Christ and begins to worship the false Christ at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial whenever he appears in Jerusalem, then they're no longer a Christian nation. They're absorbed into the Babylon of the end times, the religious one world system, and they're no longer Christian nations. They're part of that horror nationally on a national level. Only those with the seal of God in their forehead will remain virgins, spiritually speaking. Everyone else becomes part of the whore of Babylon, and Babylon means confusion. And you know who the king of Babylon of the end times is? Satan, when he appears as the false Christ. And there you have it, the Gospel of John, chapter 13.